Hi, it's Andy and today I am filming my August wrap up. It is now September which is wild. Um, I'm wearing my orange jumper in uh, homage to autumn oh, coming along. It kind of looks brown in this light. Like, are my shells orange or is my jumper brown? Because I swear it's orange. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, so today I'm going to be doing my August wrap up. Um, I hope that's what I said in the first part. I have all my books here beside me and I'm basically going to go over them and just let you know what I read. I did manage to read all of my Aurelium Magical Readathon prompts and completed that for all the exams I needed plus a few extras um, and completed all the Arc August prompts as well so basically smashed it last month uh, not to brag and hopefully that will carry on to this month because in September I have a good chunk of a TBR to do. Uh, you'll have seen that a couple of weeks ago. Since then I have added books but we'll see how I get on. So without further ado I'm just going to get right into the books that I read in August. The first book I read in August was The Library of the Dead by T.L. Huchu. This was definitely not what I was expecting. This is kind of like a younger, young adult um, is it meant to be a horror? I don't know if it's meant to be a horror. I don't understand horror. But I'm sure someone said this was meant to be a horror. I may be talking right on my ass. I'm not sure. But basically this follows our main character, Ropa, and she lives in this dystopian future estic Edinburgh. As in like, it's set in the future, I think, and everything's gone to hell. Uh, so she lives in this caravan in a field with her gran and her sister and she and her gran have these magical abilities that come through her family line. Um, her sister doesn't appear to have the abilities yet but her and her gran certainly do and to her this means that she can talk to ghosts so um, she will charge for services, ghosts will come to her with a message from the family and she will pass it on for a cost because everything's gone to hell and it's the only way she can really make money and uh, you know providing the service. So when this is all happening a ghost comes to her and she explains to her that she explains to Ropa that her son has gone missing and she needs her help to find him. Ropa initially says no I'm not helping you because you can't pay me and then her tender heart gets the best of her and she decides to help her get herself into trouble in the, in the you know in the midst of things but this ended up being I was so anxious to read this because I didn't think I was going to like it and I ended up actually loving it so I'm really looking forward to the second one. I just need to check and see if it's in paperback because I'm not getting a paperback in a hardback so I'll wait and see if it's out on paperback and I'll buy it. Definitely recommend. It is actually really 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 interesting. I really enjoyed it so definitely recommend. Next I read Prince Caspian by C.S. Lewis. This is the fourth in the Chronicles of Narnia. I am basically rereading the Narnia books and this is where I got to. I only read this one this month because I got really behind on my reading so I didn't pick up another one. So next month I've added The Voyage of the Dawn Treader to my TBR. But yeah, this is just back to adventures in Narnia. Um, Caspian needs help and the four from the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe are pulled back into the world to help him and help him get his throne back. So yeah, I don't don't know if this one's very popular. There was a movie video about this one, so it's most likely people know about this one, but um, basically like humans have taken over Narnia and it's a hellish place and Caspian wants to, to do better, basically. Um, but his uncle who killed his father is very Hamlet. His uncle who killed his father is now looking after him and when the Queen has a son, Caspian's life is in danger. So he turns to the old Narnians to help him and then Peter, Susan, Edmund and Lucy come back and help him get his thrown back. The next one was a surprise in me that I actually really enjoyed but I was so so scared to read and that is Battle Royale uh, by Kushin Takami. I think that's how you pronounce it. This book is huge and there are like 40 odd characters, like a ridiculous number of characters in this book but I actually really really enjoyed it. It read so quickly and I couldn't stop thinking about it when I wasn't reading it so I see that as a great success. Spoops, you pulled out another one. This this is something I would definitely recommend to people to read as long as you're not too squeamish. It's not that bad 
but I also have very little qualms when it comes to torturing people. Animals can't deal with it. People, you know, in books, in books, torture them all you want, um, do horrible things to them. The closest I've ever gotten to not being able to deal with it was in Outlander, and if you've read Outlander or is it in Dragonfly and Amber? One of them, y you'll understand. But um, yeah, in this it was basically just a battle royale, what you'd think, um, put on an island, you need to kill everybody, but then with a twist and I just, just I really really liked it, I really enjoyed it um, and that little bit at the end made me think there might be a sequel but I don't think there is but I think I want one. If you could that'd be great. The next book I read was The Switch by Bethel Lady. I really really liked this. This is going to be one of my favourite Bethel Ladies from now on. Um, our two characters, Alina and Eileen decided to switch places. Lena is working in London and she's in a corporate office and basically burns out and her gran is living in a small town and kind of almost gets sick of it after everything that's happened with Lena's sister dying and her mum having a mental breakdown her gran sort of picking up all the pieces. So they decide to switch um, because Lena wants to get out of London and Eileen wants to find love but there's only like five men in this village and she knows them all and she doesn't want to date any of them so uh, London gives her a much bigger pull. So they switched the, their, their lives and it was just so much better than I thought it could have been. The sense of community that is in here, the way that Lena goes from London where you know nobody talks to their neighbours or anything like that and she comes into this old sort of like old style village where everybody knows their neighbour's business and there's always that one person that will make sure everybody knows everybody's business and integrates herself into that community and finds it really really rewarding. It's just fantastic. She does great things for this village and it changes her inside as well and you know for the good. And then Eileen in London she starts dating this guy while also chatting to others online and also begins to pull the neighbours in this sort of block of flats out of their shell um, including the older neighbour downstairs who sort of isolated herself and it, you know to Eileen that is the worst thing she could have done and she decides that she's going to make a community in this place and she does and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and please read this book. The next book I read was another surprising one and that was The Kingmaker's Daughter by Philippa Gregory. I actually really enjoyed this. I enjoyed this more than I've enjoyed any of the other Philippa Gregory books I've read. This followed Anne Neville and her sister and um, Richard III, but mainly Anne and Isabel and you know throughout her life and how her father's king making affected his daughters because he basically married them off to both sides of the, the fight and then denounced one when it didn't suit him. And basically men are awful um, and the women suffer for it. So that's pretty much all Philippa Gregory's books, you know, it shows the um, triumph of men and how it affects the women, usually negatively. And I really felt for Anne. Anne is the first of the characters in the Cousins War series that I've actually felt bad for. She's the only one I've had any sympathy for. Um, she really truly loved Richard, at least in this book, and she just wanted her son to have a good life. It all just kind of went to hell. So yeah, really really good, really really surprised. The next book I read as part of the Schwab Along and that is The Neo Witch by V. Schwab. This also has The Ashbourne Boy in it, so I also read The Ashbourne Boy, um, which is a story within the story but also before the story, that makes sense. So The Neo Witch is about a town where they live basically on a moor and they're in this little little village and then it's surrounded by the moor and there used to be witches in this moor until the people decided to get rid of them. Um, so our main character Lexi, yep Lexi, um, her father used to be on sort of more friendly terms with the two women that are kind of like the only witches that are left that live on the outskirts and don't do any magic anymore and her, her dad died and we open on Lexi sort of grieving and dealing with this and then children in the village start to go missing in the middle of the night with absolutely no trace 
but at the same time a stranger appears in the town. So Lexi's like, I'm going to find out what's happening and I need to keep my sister safe because she has a young sister that's the right age to be taken. Everybody in the town thinks that the, the stranger has taken the children but Lexi has met the stranger and does not think this at all. So um, she ends up naming the stranger Cole because he refuses to give his name and they end up sort of teaming up to find out what's going on. Turns out the near witch who everybody thought was dead, not quite so dead. I mean she's dead but she's not, not quite so dead if you know what I mean. Um, so basically they, they you know, team up and also have to battle the townspeople who have gone sort of like townspeople and are after Cole because they think he's responsible even though he's actually trying to help and because he has magical abilities he has the ability to sort of help in a way that the townspeople aren't able to help themselves while that sentence got away from me. But yeah basically they, they team up for this and um, they make a great couple and I love it. The Ashburn Boy is a short story which is how Cole became sort of who he is. So he basically was the son of a woman who married the head of this other village um, which was so far away that they, they don't know of each other um, from the near rich and he has the ability to control fire and basically a lot of crap goes down his um cousin like step cousin decides he doesn't like him tries to kill him <sighs> hits the fan and coal accidentally burns down the entire village and everybody dies and then he goes wandering and that's how he ends up in near which is the name of the town in the first book i should have said but yeah really enjoyed that and really nice to have the, the second story as well in there. Um, I didn't realise that, that that would be in there so that I did another one to my list of books read. Next was The Lie Tree by Frances Hardinge. This was probably about the only Frances Hardinge book that I could have picked up and actually enjoyed. I kind of liked it, kind of didn't. It was like very, um, very, very strange. So it's like set in Victorian, Edwardian Elizabeth Edwardian times, I'm not quite sure, um, where Darwin has just released his um, book on the origin of species and scientists and clerics alike are having a fight about it. And our main character's dad, our main character Faith, her dad is a reverend or priest or something, but he's also a scientist and he has been put into sort of shame in society for something he did or said or you know well he faked something so um he's been put been put into scandal so they escape to this island where he takes up the rectory not the rectory i don't know the terms he takes up the man's basically um in that area and his daughter discovers that what he actually found was a lie tree and the lie tree works by being fed lies so you have to tell the lie tree a lie and then spread that rumour, spread that lie and the more people it gets to, the bigger the lie, the more people believe it, the bigger the fruit on this lie tree gets and it will show you something, a truth that matches the lie. So he faked a fossil of an angel so he sort of stuck some feathers on a fossil of a humanoid um, and made people believe or lied because of lie tree to say that, that he found the fossil of an angel and so what he wanted to get from that was the tree to give him a fruit to prove or to tell the truth as to whether God exists um, and he he dies in an apparent suicide before this but Faith says no my dad would not commit suicide he would not do that absolutely not um, she discovers a lie tree and um, decides to start feeding it lies to find out who killed her dad and everything just kind of spirals from there and um, I actually really enjoyed it had I known what it was before I picked it up probably wouldn't have picked it up but I'm glad I did so it's really really strange and I honestly don't know whether or not I recommend it but I know I don't like this sort of time period so that kind of took me out of it a bit but I don't know I liked it but I'm still confused if that makes sense. Next is a reread that nobody will be surprised about. 
and that is Heartstopper Volume 2. I needed a graphic novel for something. This is the only graphic novel that I really like. It's Heartstopper, so I made Heartstopper. Um, this is just the second volume. Follows Nick and Charlie. One is a gay boy who's out of school and one is a bisexual boy who is just discovering that he is attracted to boys as well as girls and that he is specifically attracted to Charlie. Um, so Nick is the biggest golden retriever boy ever and Charlie is just the cutest button with a lot of mental health issues. Um, but yeah, I love Alice Wilson's work. Her, you know, comic strips are gorgeous and this is just a continuation of that. This is free on um, Webtoons if anybody wants to go read it and see if they like it because that's what I did. I did not think I was going to like this. I ended up binging the whole thing on Webtoons and then went and bought these so um, if you don't know if you're going to like this go and read it on Webtoons. If you want go watch the TV show. Um, they've done a fantastic job but you know if I give this, if I ever give Heartstopper anything less than five stars it's a cry for help and someone's holding me hostage. I know a Heartstopper tattoo. Like, <laughs> I love Heartstopper. So this is always going to be a five star. Next up was Beach Read by Emily Henry. I really really enjoyed this. I don't know why I didn't pick this up when I first heard about it. I should have because I would have really enjoyed it then as well. But no, dragged my feet. But I've got it now, I've read it now and I really really enjoyed it. This I thought was going to be just a fluffy romance. Um, we are two rivals. We've got January and Augustus, who likes to be known as Gus, and they are rivals. He like he writes, you know, the great American novel, literary fiction. He's a bit of a snob about it, and January writes romance, and he thinks, or she thinks that he thinks that her work is not worth much. And um, when in reality, as you know, since it's a romance novel, we probably know already. He has been pining for her from the moment he met her but he doesn't really know how to communicate with people and just ends up sounding like a total dick. Um, so a lot of the comments and compliments that he would give her, she thought he was being sarcastic, so had disliked him from the start and because he criticised her heavily as well and he explains later on that the reason he criticised her is because he actually thought her, worth, her work was worth a lot, therefore the criticisms were to help because he thought it was worth helping which is by the by but um, they are both sort of stuck and they can't they, they just don't know what to write next they can't write anything they've got writer's block so they end up in these two cottages next to each other on the beach uh, by a lake I'm sure they name a lake but I can't remember who like what the lake's name um, and January has moved into this house because her dad has just died and left her in this house but she's found out that this is a second house that nobody knew about and in fact he was having an affair um, which his mum knew, which her mum knew about but never told her and she's only found out at the funeral so she has to go and clear this house out to sell um, whereas Gus bought this house next door years ago to live next to his aunt who lives in this town who is the best character ever, her and her wife just excellent. But yeah, so um, they decide to switch genres and he will write a romance, she will write the next great American novel, lit fic, and whoever gets a book deal first with it wins and there's consequences to the bit. Um, so Gus takes January on sort of trips that he's already planned to interview people who were part of a cult and this cult ended when the whole place burnt down and everybody died, basically. Um, very Manson esque cult, uh, very Manson esque cult. And um, January decides that every week they will go on some kind of research date. So they go line dancing and do other things because he doesn't understand what romance is. And through this, they end up talking, they end up being attracted to each other, and I just, I just really liked it. So I'm so excited to read. Um, more of Emily Henry. I've not managed to get any Emily Henry on my TBR for this month, but I might try and squeeze one in there. Maybe? Possibly. The next book I read was not on my TBR and was thoroughly unexpected, and that is The White Princess by Philippa Gregory. I was not planning to read this for I don't know how long, but I got a link from Ro at One in Three Worlds and that gave me two months of script for free and nothing I wanted to read 
was on script on audiobook because I had the most horrendous migraine. I felt really, really unwell and I couldn't sit and read. I, I just couldn't. I needed to be somewhere in the dark with my eyes closed but I could listen to sound and I was hating that I wasn't able to read anything because the podcast I was listening to just wasn't doing it for me. So this ended up being on Scribd as an audiobook so I thought, fuck it. I've been struggling through these books for months and months and months so I can, if I can get an audiobook to get through this, fantastic. Um, this follows Elizabeth of York who is Elizabeth Woodville's daughter and her family has basically been thrown off the throne, her father's been, her father died, her mum's been denounced as a whore um, and she's been called illegitimate despite the fact that she is her father's only natural heir. Um, she is her father's heir because her brothers have gone missing or died depending on who you believe and the story that you believe from history. I basically just, again with Philippa Gregory, the consequences that happen with the women um, due to the decisions made of the men and in this, this ties in really really well with Kingmaker's daughter because Elizabeth becomes the mistress to Richard who is Anne Neville's husband and the king and her own dad's brother which thank god he died, Richard the king, the, her uncle died before anything could happen so thank god for that. She then ends up marrying Henry Tudor and um, birthing one of our favourite uh, Tudor monarchs, that is Henry. <laughs> but yeah basically it just follows her life and that that's that's basically it. Um, Henry Tudor doesn't seem like a bad person in this but his um, decisions are kind of eh, and Elizabeth is really the one that has to suffer for them but she does really well for herself in this and yeah it's it's a big chunky one and the, the text is really really small it's a really long audiobook but not much happens I'm, if I'm being honest not much happens so but yeah I finally finished The Cousins War and I'm really happy about that the next book I read was kind of a panic read, almost. Um, so I was given Burn by Lily Wildheart, and that was an arc I was given by the author. She was on Twitter and Twitter on TikTok and asking if anybody would like to read and review her book. Um, and I was like, yeah, go for it. I would love to do that. So she messaged me and asked if I would like a copy. I said yes. She sent me the copy and I read it. It's now out on Kindle Unlimited. Um, you can get a paperback as well but it's on Kindle Unlimited if you have Kindle Unlimited. I actually really enjoyed it. It is not what I was expecting because I didn't read much into what it was about before I said I wanted the arc. Um, so basically our main character, whose name I can't remember because I'm terrible at remembering character names, she goes to... she's away visiting her dad over summer and then when she comes back, as she's on the plane, come back into wherever it is she lives and um, she gets a text message, a text message from her mum saying that she has married someone and here's the new address to the new house and she <laughs> comes off the plane and gets picked up by the butler who by the way is the best, not butler, he's something else like the house manager but he's the best character, hands down he's the best character and um, so she goes back to this house and it's a massive, she calls it a McMansion um, and it's got wings, like the house has wings, um, whereas her and her mum were like together in this tiny two bed flat and had no money. Now suddenly she's got a stepdad who is stupidly rich um, and she knows she has a stepbrother and she's like great, stupidly rich boy as well and finds out that her new stepdad has signed her up to the local college, university, whereas she was just going to go to community college because she didn't have any money. So that night she speaks to a friend and her friend's like, let's go to a party. Like, let's just go to a party, it'll be fun. So she goes to a party in this part of the town that she has never been to before. And her friend, who is actually more like a frenemy, um, leaves her there and buggers off. And she bumps into these three guys who were in the band that were playing at the party and they're like, do you want to come to the basement with us? And it's not like a creepy, like, murdery basement, it's like a... Um, like American mansion basement media room style thing so of course because that night she is out of her mind and is like I'm a party girl I'm gonna do what I want even though this is not really how I would act she decides to go with these boys 
to the basement. Now, I was disturbed at first because I thought she was like 17, 16, 17. Turns out she's like 19. So it's not quite as bad. Um, but yeah, so she goes to the basement with these boys and it ends up hooking up with them. Um, and then wakes up the next morning at this weird at the house and I was like, oh I should probably go home. I'm really hungover, feeling like crap, kind of embarrassed about what happened the night before. Gets home, opens the kitchen door, and who's there but the three boys from last night because the one she actually slept with was her new stepbrother. Cute <laughs> you know. <laughs> the book then follows them as they go to university. Um, which is, you know, just like a little bit over there um, and the stepbrother ends up just like, it's like he hates her, he doesn't want to speak to her, he doesn't want to see her, he's cruel to her, he's horrible. Um, it's kind of like a bully romance in that sense. Um, but the twins, one of whom was there that night and one of whom wasn't, really like her so they start to sort of court her almost um, and she ends up dating both the twins and the twins are actually so cute. I love the twins. Um, they have puppies. They actually have puppies. Rottweiler puppies who f figure in this book quite a lot. But yeah, basically it is like a bully romance reverse harem type book and I actually really enjoyed the character development. Like, it sounds really strange in a book like that but the character development and the way she portrayed the twins and um, Cole and then Travis who's the stepbrother I can't even remember that, but I can't remember the main character's name. Um, but yeah, the way she depicts those characters and the interactions that they have with other characters makes it made it really interesting. And then there was a twist at the end, and it was like there's now a murderer on campus, and one of her friends has been killed, and he's coming after her. And then it ends on a cliffhanger, and the next book's out in November, so it's fine because it will be on Kindle Unlimited, and I will read that book in November because I need to know what happened. I after the first chunk of this book I was like what the hell am I reading? Had a meltdown, continued reading and then it just it was fine. If you're going to read this you just need to push through the first bit. It will all make sense. I promise. It will all make sense. Could it have been edited better? Absolutely. Should someone have read that and said to her maybe we tweak a little bit of it? Absolutely. But just push through it. Push through the first bit. The rest of it will make sense and if you don't want to read the second one by the end of the first one I will be surprised. So yeah, please let me know if any of you read this or if it sounds interesting to you because it is the first arc that I've ever been given. It is my first arc as a booktuber and I'm really, really happy with that. I'm so, like, I know this is going to, this must sound so stupid to people like get arced all the time, but this is my first arc and I know like NetGalley and stuff like that exist, but to be given an arc by the author just to me is, is massive so I'm really excited with this and I hope that maybe somebody will pick it up and it will be a book that you really like. And the last book that I read and slogged through because by this point in the month I was dead was The Librarian of Eswich by Antonio Terpi translated by Lilith Thwaites. Lilith Thwaites, that was really hard to say. Um, basically this is a fictionalised version based on the true story of Dita Krause who was a 14 year old girl who was interred at Auschwitz, Birkenau and she was in Block 31 which was the family camp, it was an experimental camp um, where they kept families to kind of show people from like the Red Cross and things when they turned up to inspect the camps, but like oh look these these families are being treated so well and they just kind of hid all the torture that was happening and um, so she ended up being part of that and there was a little bit of resistance a little bit of resistance in there obviously because <laughs> how can you not be against what was happening in our stage you know anyway and um, she becomes a librarian of block 31 and it is up to her to look after and distribute the six books that they have managed to smuggle into the camps um, I also follow some other characters, some other people that were a massive part of this and there is a section in the back that tells you what happened to them in the end um, but yeah, this, there's not much else I can say about this um, it just follows her time in the camp and you know there's talks of Dr Mengele as well who was quite possibly the most evil person that I can conceivably think of like, ever 
if you want to know just how evil Dr. Mengele was, then I would recommend reading The Twins of Auschwitz um, or Rose Under Fire. Um, the Twins of Auschwitz is about twins who were um, used in part of Mengele's experiments because he experimented on twins to see if you know, keep one as a control and torture the other one, see what happens to the one you've used as a control. He was just the... I... Mm, don't get me started. Don't get me started. But yeah, so um, this has been on my sort of watch list for a while and I finally got a copy and read it and I can't say I loved it because obviously horrible things happen to people but um, the, I always, always, always want to learn more about um, what happened to the people that were put into these camps and survivor stories are so so important so so important because they are the only people that can truly tell us what happened and they are all dying out the people who survived places like Auschwitz, Auschwitz-Birkenau and um, Ravensbrück which I cannot say properly you know they are the, now dying because they're all reaching old age so we need to, need to, need to get these stories down and need to make sure that we continue to remember what happened so that it doesn't happen again. So that's it, that's everything I read in the month of August. That was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 books. 13 books I managed to read in August and I'm really, really proud of that. It's not my best month by far, but not my worst month by far. It's right back smack in the middle. So I am, I'm really happy with that. Um, so if you've read anything that I've read and you want to chat to me about it, please do in the comments. Um, if I've made something sound interesting, please let me know because I just the reason I started this channel was to talk to people like, about books. So any book chat, just give it to me in the description in the in the comments. Um, but yeah, thanks again for watching, and I will see you in another video. Bye.